افلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق اجمعين والآقبة لأهل التقوى واليقين السلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد ثم السلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ال معصومين المنتجبين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس ويطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وهو استق الصادقين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد افلح المؤمنون الذين هم صلاتهم يحافظون صلوات <coughs> respected brothers and sisters in iman salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The all-knowing, the all-hearing We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For all of the blessings that He has given us We send our salams, our salutations Our prayers to our Imam Imam al-Zaman ajjal Allahu farajahu sharif We pray, Ya Rabbul Alameen, accept our ibadat. Ya Rabbul Alameen, forgive our sins. Ya Rabbul Alameen, forgive the sins of our marhumeen and marhumat. Lastly, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of the brothers and sisters in Islam, wherever they might be. The topic of tonight's lecture is going to be Sifatul Mu'mini. The characteristics of the mu'mineen, the signs of the mu'mineen. We will start by taking some signs from the Quran and then we will go into the narrations of the Ahlul Bayt. First characteristic that the Quran mentions is the mu'mineen are those who protect their prayers in such a way that they have khushu there's one kind of prayer that you pray because I just want to get rid of this responsibility over my shoulders recite aloud salawat The first sign is you pray in such a manner that you are not thinking of your loans and your bills. When you stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your focus, your concentration, you are pondering on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, There was a man, Ya Rasulullah, every time I pray, the only thing I am thinking of is my loans. I owe him this much money. I owe him that much money. Rasulullah said no. Whenever you stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, you have to protect your prayer in such a way that your whole thought process is about Allah Azza wa Jal. The first one, they protect their prayers in a way that their mind does not wander off anywhere. The second 
characteristics of a mu'min that we will get this from Imam Ali salawatullah wa salamu This is coming from Amir al-Mu'mineen in which he is speaking to Hammam. This is called Khutbah Hammam. The Imam says there are many signs of a believer. One of them is controlling your diet. Allahu Akbar. Not eating so much that you can barely stand up. Controlling your diet. Eating and having a control having a balance one place I went to give lectures I asked one of the brothers my brother why are you eating so much he says I am eating for tomorrow's dinner <laughs> who knows who knows if there will be dinner tomorrow or not <laughs> no my brothers and sisters the mu'mineen are those who control what they eat they have a balanced lifestyle we take two narrations. First is from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, speak less, talk less, and when you have a little bit of hunger left, stop eating your food. In this way, it will keep you healthy. In this way, you will have a longer lifestyle. The second narration, this is from Imam Ali al Riza, salawatullah wa salamu The Imam says, if you do some of the things, do not expect yourself to do the following. Number one, overeating and then trying to wake up for Salatul Layl. The Imam says, it's not going to happen. Number two, Missing the Fajr prayer and then thinking you are going to have Noorun ala Noor. You can use any cosmetics in the world. The Imam says, if you miss Salatul Fajr, that special Noor will not be on your face. And the third one, Imam says, having a friend who is against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trying to be pious. The Imam says, it's not going to work. There is going to come a day when that friend is going to derail you. Alaykum as The second sign of a believer is they eat moderate. They have a balance in their lifestyle. The third characteristic of a mu'min is they return their amana. Hukukul Ibad, Hukukul Nas. There's an Ayatollah, his name is Ayatollah Muqaddis Ardabeli. One day he went to Karbala, he hired or he rented a horse. When he was going to Karbala, he was on the horse. When he was coming back, he was walking with the horse. When he comes back into town, people ask, You have a horse, why aren't you on it? He says, When I rented the horse, the horse was rented for me only. When I was in Karbala, someone gave me one envelope. I did not have permission of the owner if I could sit on the horse with this envelope or not. This is the awareness that you need to have. This is the mentality that you need to have. Mu'min is not the one who steals the property of others. Mu'min is not the one who steals the mal of others. Going along, the fourth sign of a believer from Imam Ali Salawatullah wassalamu alayhi. The fourth is, they protect their a'mal. Allahu Akbar. Doing a'mal is one thing. It's not easy. Fasting 12, 14, 16 hours. Waking up in the middle of the night. 
praying your salat to layl doing dua mujid doing ziyarat ashura doing all these amal it's not easy mu'minin are the one they protect their amal how do they protect them number one they do not harm anybody there's a book this book is from Ibrahim Al Hadi it's a very interesting story he writes what happens to him this is very recent in 2011 he says he had to go for eye surgery when he was in that eye surgery he says I always used to pray that I want to be a Shaheed I want to be a Shaheed he says when I was going through the eye surgery for eight or six hours because in that time I saw everything in that time when I was laying there he starts his book he says I saw everything when I was laying in the hospital he says I saw this nur this nur was at the gate it was inviting me oh Ibrahim you are the one who always wanted to be Shaheed I am here to get you Ibrahim come with me he says I am not ready I have a small daughter he says the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has come I am here to get you Ibrahim says I was taken into different places he says we go to a desert he says we come to a place where there is my book my book of a'mal the angels tell me Iqra, read your book he said I start to read my book for example he says Monday all of my a'mal are there mashallah I did Salatul Fajr I made sure I didn't hurt anybody I did the khidmat I could in the Husayniya when I go to the last line it says, I ended my day with Isha. What do I see? All of my amal for that day have been erased. He asked the angels, what happened? Why did all of my amal for that day get erased? He said, the angel says, you know, when you were sitting in the Husayniya, you had finished the majlis. After the majlis, when all of you were drinking chai, you started to insult one mu'min brother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided because you have insulted one brother none of your a'mal will be accepted on that day Allahu Akbar he says the next page I go to the next page I read it says today I did Yasin today I wrote half juz of Quran Today I helped my brothers. Today I was the one who filled the waters in the water coolers. Everything. And at the end it says you ended your day with a good deed. As I was reading that, what do I see? For Tuesday all of my amal have been erased. What happened now? He says, I asked the angels. The angels say, everything was going good. But towards the end, you lied to somebody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided because you did one mistake of lying for that Tuesday, we will not accept any of your amal. Allah. This is the awareness you need to have. This is the mindset you need to have. Protect your amal, brothers and sisters. He says, next day, the same thing Wednesday it started out good my amal were written today I was the one who helped out in the Husayniya today I was the one who cleaned the Husayniya today I was the one who helped my parents today I was the one who did a good amal I helped a lady cross the road everything was written when I get to the last line, what do I see? All of my amal have been erased. Allah. What happened now? I asked the angels, what happened on this day? He says, everything was good. But on that day, 
You were jealous of a brother. You had hasad towards a brother. There's a narration from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Jealousy burns the a'mal just like the fire burns the wood. On that day, none of the a'mal are accepted. Also, what happened? Because I was jealous. La ilaha illallah. The next day, says, I see my whole book. On this day, I read Dua Imam al Zaman. It is written, Dua Al Ahad. It is written. I helped out one of my neighbors, it is written. Everything is written when I go and I read the last line. All of my amal have been erased. What happened today? The angels say, today everything was good until you started doing ghiba. You started backbiting one of your brothers. Since you backbiting one of your brothers, Allah Azza wa Jal decided that today we will not accept your honor. Allahu Akbar. He says, I keep going and I keep going with my book. It seems as if my book is empty. He says, towards the end I go, I see one of the papers or the pages. It has that I have the thawab of hajj. I have the thawab of taking care of those in the community. I have the thawab of assisting handicapped people, orphans. Everything is there when I go towards the end of my paper. The same thing, all of the amal that I had done in that day, they all have been erased. When I asked, what is the reason now? The angels respond and say, Today, you hurt a brother in such a way that your words hurt his heart. Allahu Akbar. There are some words you say, they might not feel like they're hurtful, but some brothers and sisters, they get hurt by these words. Just because you hurt that brother, Allah Azza wa Jal decided that we are not going to accept you, Amr. Then he goes later on, I am skipping because of the time. Then he goes and he sees the half of my book is only full of my Amr. When I ask the angels, why is the half of the book only filled? He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided since you were Khadim al Hussein, we will accept half of your arm. My brothers and sisters, protect your amal. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam when he was asked, Ya Rasulullah, can you describe what is a Muslim? definition of a Muslim he or she they do not harm anybody whether that's physically whether that's emotionally whether that's over social media they do not harm anybody the fourth sign of a believer was they protect their amal moving along we go to the 11th Imam Imam Hassan al Askari. Salawatullah wa salamuhu alayhi The Imam says the fifth sign of a believer is when Adhan and Iqamat is going on they are repeated and they are silent when the Adhan and Iqamat is going on it is highly suggested to repeat the Adhan and the Qama and it's advised to stay silent. 
The sixth sign of a believer is they control their desires. They have few wishes. They control their desires in such a way that they do not go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving along the seventh sign of a believer and this is coming from our fifth Imam Imam Muhammad Baqir Baqir Ulum Salawatullah Salamu They take care of their Walidain If you reach a position in your life If you outshine your father or your mother Make sure you take better care of them Make sure you do the khidmat of your parents. A man comes to the sixth Imam and he says, Ya ibn Rasulullah, I take care of my mother, I feed her, I bathe her, I give her medicine, I take care of I have been doing this for many years. Ya ibn Rasulullah, is this enough? The Imam looks at him and he says, this is not equivalent to the pain that your mother had when she kept you in her room for one day. Allahu Akbar. Mu'mineen are the ones who take care of your parents. If your parents are alive, go thank them. If your parents have passed away, give them Fatiha. Give them different ibadat. Give them Quranic verses. Seventh sign of a moment is, or a moment is, they take care of their parents. One day, Prophet Musa asks, Rabbul Alameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen, who is going to be my neighbor in Jannah? Ya Allah, who is going to be my jiran in Jannah? Who will be my neighbor? Allah says, Musa, go into the marketplace tomorrow and you will see. Prophet Musa goes and there's a man, a butcher, he's cutting meat. He goes, Salaam, Wa Alaikum as -salam. He says, the butcher says, please join me in lunch. The Prophet says, sure. They go home. When they go home, he gives Prophet Musa lunch. He says, would you join me? He says, I will not join you. He says, I have to take care of something. In the house of the courtyard, there are two poles. In those two poles, there's something hanging there. This man gets the ladder. What does Prophet Musa see? He sees that this man takes his mother out. He feeds her. He bathes her. He cleans her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Musa, the one who takes care of their parents is going to be your neighbor in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Taking care of your walidain. The eighth and the last one, eighth sign of a believer is they invite other people to sirat mustaqim. They invite other brothers and sisters to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One time, Prophet Ibrahim, he was standing on the street looking for someone who can join him to eat dinner. One day he sees a man, he brings him. They both sit down, they're ready to eat. Prophet Ibrahim says, recite Bismillahir Rahman Ar Rahim. He says, I do not know this. I don't know who Rahman is. I do not know who Rahim is. Prophet Ibrahim, he kicks him out. Kicks him out the house. Go leave. A voice comes. Ibrahim, yes, Rabbul Alameen. Why did you kick that person out? Ya Allah, he doesn't even know who you are. Ibrahim, Go and get that person. Bring him back. Teach him. Allahu Akbar. 
Prophet Ibrahim goes, he brings the man, they both sit down and the man asks, why did you come and get me? He says, my Lord has ordered me. The man says, if this is how merciful your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, from today I want to join the same religion that you are. Allahu Akbar. You also can do tabligh, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't have to be a Mawlana who does tabligh. You can do tabligh of Islam at your work, in your schools, in your universities. Invite others to Islam. Invite others to the door of the Ahlul Bayt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we can follow the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. We can go to Hajj, Umrah, Ziyarat on a yearly base. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our Muslim brothers and sisters wherever they might be. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. When Imam comes, we can be a part of his army. Dwai Imam is the man. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma.